GeForce experience is dead. Long live the NVIDIA app. That's right, as of today, NVIDIA has killed GeForce experience and rolling out version 1.0 of the NVIDIA app in its place, taking the far superior app out of beta for the first time. Now, technically, GeForce Experience isn't fully dead. It's not going to be deleted from existing systems automatically. It's just no longer going to receive any updates and will move to legacy status. Moving forward, NVIDIA will be using the NVIDIA app in its place. So in upcoming drivers, NVIDIA will bundle the app instead of GeForce Experience, and this will happen soon, according to the company. They say this will be an optional part of the installation. Previously, to access the app, you had to download a beta version from the NVIDIA website, and this would replace GeForce Experience on your system. NVIDIA says app version 1.0 is now ready to fully replace GeForce Experience and all its features are now migrated into the new app. This is step one down the path towards a single unified application that replaces both GeForce Experience and the NVIDIA control panel. A bunch of features from the control panel are also now in the NVIDIA app, but not everything has made the jump. So for now, the NVIDIA app and control panel will continue to coexist. Future updates will continue to add in control panel settings with the goal of making the NVIDIA app the single destination for all NVIDIA GPU settings. But version 1.0 marks the end of the separate GeForce Experience app now that all of its features have transitioned across. If you're a GeForce GPU owner and haven't yet transitioned to the NVIDIA app, this is the perfect time to do so because the NVIDIA app is far superior to NVIDIA's older GeForce Experience and Control Panel apps, even if every Control Panel feature isn't in the app yet. The new app is much easier to use, it's easier to navigate to key settings, it unifies things that were bizarrely split between two applications previously, and the biggest positive change of all, there is no login required. This means GeForce owners can now keep their drivers up to date easily without having to go through the annoying and completely unnecessary login process. I've been using the app's beta version since it came out in February, and in addition to its speed, this is a key reason why I love using it. I'm constantly installing drivers on systems, reinstalling drivers, and I did like how GeForce Experience could be used to keep those drivers up to date, but man was it annoying to have to log in on every new system or after every driver reinstall. Some people just refuse to use GeForce Experience for that reason. With the NVIDIA app, you can simply install it and update your drivers with no hassle, no nagging to log in, driver updates are in the first tab in the app, it's super easy to navigate and use, and all the key driver information for the latest update is right there. It works really nicely. Now you can still log in to the NVIDIA app if you really want to, there is a login button in the top right corner, but so far I've found zero reason to do so. NVIDIA says that to redeem rewards and access games bundled with GeForce GPU purchases, you'll have to be logged in, but I've personally never bothered to, and I would only do it to access a bundled game on a GPU that I bought. All of the key features are available without a login, you can simply ignore the redeem tab when logged out. The second major reason you should move to using the NVIDIA app as soon as possible is its performance. Accessing key features is much faster and easier, it's less clunky, it feels like a modern app, not something designed in 2005 like the control panel. Check out the differences in speed here between the NVIDIA app and NVIDIA control panel as we move between three key features. We'll open each app and start at the home page, then move to the display resolution settings screen, then to the graphic settings where we can adjust game settings and features, and then to the driver update page. Of course, there's no driver page in the control panel app at all. That would require loading the entirely separate GeForce Experience app on systems without the new NVIDIA app installed. The NVIDIA app is just significantly faster to use. The interface updates near instantly in most cases. You don't have to wait for things like the graphic settings to slowly load in. And in both examples here, I'm using a high-end system with an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, 32GB of memory, and a GeForce RTX 4090 GPU. There is absolutely no excuse for the control panel being this slow in 2024 with this level of hardware, and that's something NVIDIA has addressed and will continue to address through the NVIDIA app. Now one of the criticisms we heard on our original coverage of the NVIDIA app was some people not being a fan of NVIDIA changing what is a very simple application, the NVIDIA control panel, and making it more complicated and harder to navigate through a modern interface in the NVIDIA app. Lots of people just like the information dense experience you get with the control panel and aren't as much of a fan of the more modern, spaced out, larger text format version. I just don't think this criticism holds up at all when you properly look at how the current version of the app operates now that more control panel features have been integrated. 
I'm sure some people will still prefer the old control panel because that's what they're used to, but I'll show one example here of why the new app interface is so much better. Let's look at the display settings. In the control panel, these settings are split into multiple different pages. If you want to adjust the resolution and refresh rate, that's one page. G-Sync variable refresh rate settings are in another page. Rotation commands are in another page. Anytime you want to adjust these parameters on multiple displays, you have to go through the slow interface and load multiple pages of settings, which is all sluggish and disjointed. On the NVIDIA app, all of these settings are found together on the same page. No need to wait for different pages to load. No need to select the display you want to adjust settings for multiple times in multiple areas of the interface. It's all consolidated and much easier to use. G-Sync settings are right there at the top. Displays listed with settings for each, including resolution, refresh rate, and orientation, all grouped together. The useful information readouts for things like what connectors are being used and the display's capabilities are still here. And especially on larger, higher resolution monitors, the larger font size, at least in my opinion, is easier to read. Not every setting that is found in the control panel has moved across to the NVIDIA app yet, so yes, there are missing features in the NVIDIA app. For example, display color format controls and custom resolutions haven't been added to the app yet, so for now you'll still need to use the control panel for that. Same with video color settings, multiple display settings including NVIDIA Surround, those things still require the control panel. But that doesn't mean these features will be removed when NVIDIA switches entirely to the NVIDIA app. NVIDIA are still saying the app is a work in progress and they're focused on adding in the most frequently used settings first, with the remaining features to be added in future updates. Personally, I think an interface that consolidates all of the display settings into a single fast interface will be a huge improvement, and we can already see the steps NVIDIA has taken towards that in the current app interface. The game settings interface is also consolidated and improved significantly. With the old setup, these settings were split between the control panel and GeForce Experience. The control panel would have driver overrides and driver settings, while GeForce Experience would include game settings and NVIDIA's optimization tools. Again, the NVIDIA app consolidates this into a single interface for each game, so you can adjust every setting in the one app. This consolidation makes a lot more sense for modern games in particular. The control panel features legacy overrides for things like anisotropic filtering and anti-aliasing that do nothing in newer titles. It makes sense for a game setting page in the NVIDIA app to control these things through actual in-game settings rather than driver settings. But other driver settings that actually can change things, like for example the frame rate cap, DSR settings, G-Sync settings, V-Sync, and so on, they are all still available and included here. I find this interface much easier to navigate and use, and it blows the control panel out of the water for speed and accessibility. Changing these settings in the control panel is very slow, and changing between games is clunky. Again, not every feature from the control panel has moved across to the NVIDIA app yet, but most of the main settings you'd use are now in the app. Since installing the app earlier in the year and keeping it updated as improvements roll in, I found myself using the control panel less and less, which is a good thing. In comparison, the control panel feels even worse to use these days now that a more modern app is available. Since the first release, NVIDIA have added a performance tab into the system section, which includes full GPU statistics and one-click GPU overclocking that NVIDIA says keeps your GPU under warranty. The limit sliders below relate to the one-click process and allow you to control how hard the overclocking feature will attempt to push your GPU, and it allows you to set limits that you want for power, temperature, and fan speed. There's also the much improved overlay, which has been a feature of the NVIDIA app since its initial release. Relative to the overlay included with GeForce Experience, the new overlay doesn't take up the entire screen when you flick it on to configure it, and the general layout is easier to use. The overlay includes all the in-game features that you want to access, such as video capture and screenshot abilities, game filters, and statistic overlays. In addition to this, the NVIDIA app brings several features that weren't available in previous apps, such as RTX HDR and AV1 video capture. Accessing all of these features I find much easier than navigating through GeForce Experience, and at times it wasn't always clear which features were in GeForce Experience and which were in the control panel. The new interface and consolidation of features is a much better experience for GeForce GPU owners. Having now used the NVIDIA app in its various beta iterations over the last six months, it's something I highly recommend you install on your system in place of GeForce Experience if you own a GeForce GPU. It's simply a much better app and it continues to get better. In fact, 
I haven't really seen Nvidia take a misstep with this one as they add more features and bring in more functionality from the control panel, the overall package that Nvidia offers gets better and easier to use. I really don't feel like this is a downgrade in any way, which just can't be said for other software that we use daily. I'm looking at you, Microsoft. It also brings Nvidia's software suite more up to scratch with AMD, which has had a high quality app experience available through Radeon software for some time now. As of the 1.0 launch of the Nvidia app, Radeon software is still the more feature rich app and it includes every setting and feature that AMD offers, while some features are still not available yet in the Nvidia app. But there's most of the main functionality in the app at this point, which is great to see, and you can continue to give feedback to Nvidia on stuff you'd like to see added or changed. If you haven't already downloaded the NVIDIA app, you can do so right now via the NVIDIA website, and it will be bundled with GPU driver updates in the near future. Get rid of GeForce Experience once and for all and move into a new, more user-friendly era. Anyway, that's it for this brief look at the NVIDIA app version 1.0, which should be available at the time of this video going live. So yeah, like I said, get to downloading it right now and installing it on your system. As always, if you do want to support the channel here at Hardware Unbox, we have our Patreon account. Links to that is in the description below. You're going to access to some pretty cool benefits like our Discord chat, monthly live streams, behind the scenes content, and plenty of other stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.